And I'm sitting here with AC Lumumba, who is the former Zimbabwe Youth Council chairman in our Midrand studios this evening. Thank you so much for joining us here on Africa tonight. I really do appreciate your time here this evening. Firstly, how do you see the new cabinet formation for Zimbabwe and how have the people of Zimbabwe reacted to it, in your opinion? The, the moment I learned of the cabinet and I saw the list, I was very dismayed. I was almost very upset because there was a lot of things I was looking at the cabinet and I thought they were missing. I thought there were no young people. I thought there was not enough women in the cabinet. And I thought there was not enough fresh faces in the cabinet. But that's because I was looking at the people. The more I looked at the content of what was in the cabinet and I started looking and paying attention to detail, based on the option the president had, I understood exactly what the president did with that cabinet. What the president has done is he's played it safe. He's gone for a trusted team. He's gone for a team who he's worked with over, over the years. And I think he's gone for a team that is forced to deliver because they understand that the president has a very short time to pull a lot of deliverables. Um, so at a personal level, uh, I would have liked to see it different, but I trust the decision the president has made, and I know that this cabinet will bring the results. You can't beat this cabinet on paper. When you talk about credentials, you bring anybody you want from anywhere, you can't beat this cabinet on paper. So I think the president has gone for a team he trusts, and his prerogative, they will do well. Now you say the president has played it safe. What do you think... Uh the president, do you think the president has the support of its people, both nationally and globally, including the diaspora? Yes, I think the president has the support because if you look at his political party where he comes from, it's his political party, Zanu PF, that elevated him to elevated him to the position where he's at. If you look at the military, the military were very happy with his rise to the top. If you look at the judicial courts, if you look at parliament, if you look at the business community. So the stock market in Zimbabwe went up almost three to four points the moment he got elected. And ever since then, between then and now, you've seen... If you try to get a flight to Zimbabwe today, you can't even get a flight. I'm trying to get a flight to go back home. I can't get a flight until three days from now, simply because there is so much excitement about this presidency because for so long the whole world has been holding back waiting for the opportunity they can move into Zimbabwe and Zimbabwe realizes itself this is the man that has been given that responsibility so he has excited the world now he has to deliver to the world and I think he's going to get the job done mm. you talk about this excitement however on the other side there are some voices that are saying that uh, it's the army that is actually calling the shots yeah how accurate do you believe this is I don't know what shots people are talking about what shots what shots, are, you know, what, shots is the, what shots are there to make? What shots are there to call? There is a very simple system in Zimbabwe which is guided by the constitution of Zimbabwe. The president has, has executive powers to exercise executive duties. He is exercising those duties precisely at his discretion. The army has a responsibility to be the custodians and guardians of the constitution of Zimbabwe. They are doing exactly that. I think what's happening, uh, Lauren, is... People are not paying attention to what they're supposed to be doing. So the president is doing his job. The military is doing their job. The war vets are doing their job. So is the party. The question is, what job are Zimbabweans supposed to be doing? What is it that you, as a Zimbabwean, what are you supposed to be doing right now? That's what people need to pay attention to. What are you supposed to be doing right now? Should you be tweeting? Should you be Facebooking? Should you be talking about who's calling what shots? Or should you be calling your own shots? Very interesting indeed. Let's talk more about you and uh, what has your role been in the new setup for Zimbabwe specifically? And now that the struggle is over, what is your vision for the future and what are your expectations from the president? I think to answer to what, you know, what, what has my role been, I've always been the youth political maverick of my generation. I've always not apologized for being the maverick that goes ahead of everybody and says this is where we need to go, everybody come along. And I played that role and I believe I played it well. I believe the people of Zimbabwe also play their role well. Um, what role am I going to play now that the struggle is over? I will support this government with everything I have. Not because I like any particular individual. I will support this presidency because we have an opportunity as Zimbabweans that we've never had before, where we can rebuild and reimagine what our country looks like. President Munangagwa is the president in office. He's got about six to eight months while he's president. We all must support that presidency. If we don't like him, for whatever reason, if we don't like President Mnangagwa's ten uh, tenure, we can remove him in eight months. 
But right now, he is the president. I am committed to supporting him with every effort, the same effort I applied to removing the last president. I applied the same effort to making sure this one succeeds. And I know, I know that he is very committed to working with people of Zimbabwe to make Zimbabwe great. Now, what changes can we expect to see uh, in ZANU-PF now that it's post Mugabe? ZANU-PF is going to be much harder to change than the country is going to be. I think ZANU-PF still has a lot of rot in it. If you look at the hierarchy of ZANU-PF, there are men in that hierarchy who are absolute thieves. There are men in that hierarchy who are very responsible to how we ended up in the problems we were in. And I truly hope the president will be able to deal with that. I think he's going to have a tough job on his hands. The youth league will have to help him. The women's league will have to help him. So I think there's a lot of rot in there that needs to be cleaned up so ZANU-PF becomes user-friendly um, going into the future. But as far, as far as the country is concerned or government is concerned, he's got a much easier task there. He's got a lot of goodwill. He's got a lot of great talent. So fixing government is going to be much easier than fixing ZANU-PF. And he has to manage that delicacy very well because he's walking on eggshells. This is the same party that 10 provinces said we want the first lady to be vice president. The same 10 provinces said we want him to be president. The same 10 provinces said we want Mugabe to be president, we want Mugabe to go. So he's dealing with a very delicate party and Congress will be all telling. Now what is the fate of the Mugabe's in Zimbabwe in your opinion? It's a conversation and a subject I've heard a lot of people talk about and I want to say this and I want to say this on record. I don't care what happens to the Mugabe's. I just don't care. For my whole life, for all my 29 years leaving, all I've cared about is what's happening to the Mugabe's. I don't want to talk about them anymore. I care about the fate of the Zimbabweans. And I think the fate of the Zimbabweans now is, if there is any Zimbabwean who had an ambition or a dream and they had to park it on the side because the government wasn't conducive, now you can read dream again. You can go and take that ambition. You can go and take that dream and you can realize your fate in a reimagined Zimbabwe. If there's a Zimbabwean out of Zimbabwe, whether here in South Africa or anywhere else in the diaspora, whoever had an idea, of how we can solve the problems of our generation. Now, now is the time we can finally take those ideas and put them to fruition. What happens to the Mugabe's, I don't care. So you don't care or uh, you don't have an opinion on whether they should be prosecuted or not at all? I think we have way too little time to be talking about the Mugabe's. I think the story of the Mugabe's has lasted 37 years. We should not spend one more minute. Look, whether they keep everything they stole, whether we take everything they stole and, re and recover all our assets, I actually don't care. You know why I don't care? Because there is nothing they stole that the people of Zimbabwe do not have the capacity of making back if we give them the chance to. There is $15 billion that went missing. I don't even care if we don't get that back. There is no $15 billion that the, Zimbab that the Zimbabwean people cannot get if we give them the chance to. In fact, I'll conclude by saying this. There is nothing wrong with Zimbabwe. Nothing wrong with Zimbabwe at all. That the people of Zimbabwe cannot solve if you give them the chance to. Then lastly, what kind of relations is Zimbabwe looking at with the SADC? For a very long time, Zimbabwe has operated with a clenched fist. We've operated with a clenched fist when we talk to SADC, when we talk to the African Union, when we talk to the world. Now it's time to unclench that fist. Now it's time to shake hands with countries we haven't been very familiar with. Shake hands with Botswana. Now it's time to revisit our bilateral agreements with Malawi, bilateral agreements with South Africa. We have to relook the South Africa-Zimbabwe trade agreements. Right now we are a simple province of South Africa where we take everything from South Africa. South Africa takes nothing from us. We have to revisit that, that relationship. Now is the time when Zimbabwe has to look at the whole world and say we are open for business, we are open for capital. You want to do business with us? Come in and do business with us. We should not treat SADC as the political watermark that, that it has become. We should treat SADC as a vehicle that allows for serious economic integration between our people. But on SADC, finally, let me say this. It is very important for SADC to take the lead on the conversation of free movement of people. If we can have free movement of goods, okay, if goods can move through the Bybridge border into Zimbabwe or going uh, further, further up, surely, surely, SADC must take the lead on the conversation of how do we allow our people to simply move freely within this part of the region. Well, Mr. Lumumua, thank you so much uh, for joining us here on a 7 on Africa tonight and for your professional opinion and your comments this evening. Really do appreciate it. Thank you. We intend on making Zimbabwe a fantastic country and the jewel of Africa. Thank you for giving us the chance. Thank you.